I stared wide-eyed at Diana, who sat cross-legged on the railing of my balcony with her glowing red-eyed stare upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Excuse me, I felt like I needed to burp. No offense, Diana. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. A likely story. By the way, how was it exactly? Demons are the best lovers, after all. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel. You know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours, and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? This was beyond crazy. Nothing she had done made sense. Why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping you from just killing me and taking them? <laughs> you are not worth my time. Not worth your time? What, are you afraid something might happen? All at once I felt my body being lifted into the air and moved over past the railings, leaving me with nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning when the boys would find you. I wanted to speak, but the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence. Diana then chuckled and willed my body back to the balcony, setting me down gently. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back, but then their father wouldn't be happy and blah blah blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business-oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she then smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed, and let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power. Men. Women. Money. Fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. I could only stare in shock. This was a dream. It had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking me to the reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. How do you know that? H how did you... I was almost floored in surprise. How did Diana know all of this? She was a succubus, yes, but how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't Damien. Diana chuckled and leaned back against her arms. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Was I seriously being given this choice? The man I love for anything I wanted? A demon like Diana was powerful enough, yes, but did I even want to consider giving up the man I loved? Especially since it's Eric? No. She must have been crazier than I thought. I glared. Absolutely not. Diana sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I wasn't expecting was her lifting me into the air. I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became locked in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me float over to her, and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. I shut my eyes, feeling the need to bite her lips, but finding no muscles in my face listening to my mental commands. What did she do to me? 
I didn't want to enjoy it, but every single nerve in my body was flaring in excitement and pleasure as she kissed me. I felt my energy drain slowly but forcefully from my body. Was she using her magic to force energy out of my body? It seemed like forever, but finally Diana pulled away from the kiss with a smile and a lick of her lips. She lowered me back onto the patio and chuckled. For some reason, even though nothing seemed to have changed, she looked stronger. Powerful. It was almost like looking at a new Diana. Diana then stepped back off of the railing, making me catch my breath in my throat. As she took another step away from me, she looked to be simply walking on the night air. Diana smirked in my sudden surprise. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness like a shadow. I watched her fade away before looking back to the man in my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer. I did, and I will never regret it for as long as I live. I walked back inside and gently crawled back into bed within the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. The rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal with school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if magic never even appeared in my world. One thing was for certain, however. Eric loved me, and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other, and nothing was going to take that away from us, not even time itself. Our love was so powerful, it practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him holding me close every morning. To think... A demon in love with a human like me. It was unthinkable, unbelievable. It was practically impossible. But it was true. The other boys decided to leave of their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Eric at my side, so they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. Eric understood perfectly and vowed to serve me well, wishing his brothers the best. Besides, Eric had someone new to care for now. His brothers didn't need to worry about him now that he was caring for me. I felt bad as well for being closer to Eric than the others, but they reassured me that I was okay and that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. They made me promise, however, that I would love Eric for as long as we lived. That promise was instantly given. But what of my future? Well, it was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company and, with the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father as well into letting him run for CEO. So James just takes that spot no matter what. Okay. I mean, granted he would be a better fit than Eric. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all that was beyond me, but when the vote was called, James had taken over the company I was destined to have. He vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company. For a demon, it was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see how James helped it shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help James build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Eric reassured me that he would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. One evening, a good couple of years after the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself so I wandered my house and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic. It all was surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, relishing in the feelings dancing within my soul. <sighs> I let out a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I was standing at the entrance to the backyard and the door was slightly ajar. I peeked out to see Eric standing up by the gazebo, looking up at the moon in the sky. Ooh. I slowly opened the door and exited the house, walking towards the man who held my heart. Hearing the grass beneath my feet, Eric turned his head and smiled at me. <laughs> good evening, princess. You still call her that two years later? You're a good boy. 
I smiled and blushed a bit, moving to stand at Eric's side. What are you doing out here? Ah, uh, I'm merely making friends with the moon, my love. I blushed deeper. Hearing him call me his love made my heart skip a beat. Eric chuckled, most likely being able to see the blush through the darkness of the night. I wanted to see the night sky. The yard is one of the more perfect places to stargaze. Don't you agree? Yeah. I found myself staring up at the sky as well. The stars all glimmered in the dark blue, almost pitch black sky. They all seemed to cast an entrancing spell on my eyes, not letting me look away. Not that I cared, anyway. Eric gently wrapped an arm around my waist, pulling me close to him without breaking my stare at the sky. I don't deserve you, you know. I raised an eyebrow and looked at Eric, confused. What did he mean? Eric simply stared at the sky, holding me gently to him. You're much too wonderful to be loving a demon such as myself. As cliché as it may be, the beauty fell in love with a beast. A beast with an insatiable hunger for lust. Oh, hush. That's what I like about you. But you're not a beast, Eric. Eric looked down at me in slight surprise. I turned my body to him and gently held his cheek in my hand, feeling him nuzzle gently into it and cradle it with his own hand. You're not a beast, nor will you ever be. You're Eric, and you're the man I want to love for the rest of my life. Demon or not, I love you. Eric stared, looking lost at what to say at my words. It was all true, though. He had faults, sure, but who didn't? I enjoyed his company and adored every part of his personality. The mask he wore would slowly fade over time. Or maybe not. After all, his mask is part of who I fell in love with. Mm-hmm. Eric gently moved his head and kissed my palm, closing his eyes and absorbing what I had said. He gently opened his eyes partially, staring past my hand. Sometimes I forget that you're human. You entrance me better than any demon could. You're truly unbelievable. Are you real, or am I dreaming? <laughs> yes, Eric. I'm real. I'm right here. Eric finally looked to me, a look of desperate need in his eyes. You're not dreaming. I gently guided Eric's face down with my hand and kissed him softly, reminding him of my touch and reaffirming my words. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Eric gently pulled me to him, facing me to hug me to his chest. I nuzzled into Eric's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing its tempo. You'll regret it. I promise you. You'll regret loving someone like me. You underestimate me. Eric chuckled softly, the sound of his laughter sending happy waves down my spine. Eric smiled down at me and kissed the top of my head. My focus, however, traveled down to my hand, which had become gently held by Eric's. His thumb grazed over my ring finger, where I could feel soft veins of energy tingle on my skin. I watched as, around my ring finger, a small vine wrapped itself around and tied itself into a lovely ring. The ring held a beautiful purple flower with a red gem in the middle glistening in the moonlight. <gasps> I gasped before looking up to Eric, who slightly smirked down at me. So sure of yourself, are you, that I'm going to say yes? See? I'm taking advantage of you already. This is why I love you. Eric. Eric gently moved his hand and cradled my cheek, replacing the smirk on his face with a tender smile that made my heart skip a beat. I don't know what I did to deserve you, but I swear to love you till the end of days and beyond. You make me feel so complete. I can no longer imagine what I would do in life without you. Let me stay with you. I love you so much. I felt my heart going a million miles an hour. Was this truly happening? Yes, it was. I felt it. I knew it. Woohoo! Hey! Out of pure happiness, I wrapped my arms around Eric and kissed him deeply. Eric stared before holding me to him and kissing deeply back, pouring all of his love to me into that kiss. I did the same for him, not wanting to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my arms. There were no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was, kissing the man I would be with forever, under the beautiful moonlight of the night. I had gained the heart of a demon, no, of a man I loved. 
I vow to cherish him and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Eric would. And that was my happily ever after. Eric's kiss. The letter R. New password. Demon war again. Alright, I'll add the R. I got T and R so far. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that ending pulled a little more for me because my hubby also um, proposed to me at a gazebo. It wasn't at night, but it was a gazebo. So I'm like, ugh. Eric, you're the best. Anyway, we got our achievement, Eric's kiss. Oh, so cute. I loved it. Okay, well, no surprise, Eric's is my favorite so far. <laughs> We got the man behind the mask, and he was so sweet and lovely. Ugh, fell in love with him so hard. But we're not done with him yet, thankfully. We got a little bit more to do with him. He's got an epilogue to do, so I'm going to do that next, guys. If you're interested in seeing some more Eric, and I mean, why wouldn't you be? I hope I shall see you over there for that. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And until next time, I shall see you later.